Pathetic pulmonary fibrosis. There's different kind of names. So whatever it is, uh, the topic is very important. Okay, very very important. Not for all in emergency part one as well as for part two, even for phases exam. And once again, if you're going to appear at the HCS part two or even the MCPS exam, then this is this would be a very important topic for you guys, and that is the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Particularly here in Bangladesh, not, not in actually Bangladesh, all over the country, all over the world. So as you know that there are so many patients who have been attacked with the COVID viruses and that is the reason why they, they, they're going to suffer, might be, they're going to suffer uh, with, uh, with this kind of pulmonary fibrosis. So findings of pulmonary fibrosis, these kind of findings are very much important for you guys to elicit, to get the point that what sound you are going to hear just by auscultating the lung field of the patient, okay? So that is very important for all of us to know details about this idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So what I was talking about, that idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, always, it's not always being called that idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It has another term which we're calling the cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis, okay? By the way, we're calling it the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Sometimes the pulmonary fibrosis or the IMD, the interstitial lung disease. So, so many things are there. So don't be confused, okay? So let us begin. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, uh, was previously um, called the cryptogenic fibrosis in alveolitis. It's one kind of chronic lung condition. And that is characterized by the progressive fibrosis of the interstitial of the lungs, what I've actually said earlier. So well, well, there are many causes of lung fibrosis. As you know, the, uh, if I'm talking about the lung fibrosis, so don't forget about the drug medication, okay, hydrogen and the atrazinic drug in this, like after giving the cyclophosphamide, after giving the methoprexate, okay, even after some chemotherapy, you know, after giving the chemotherapy, like the bilirubin is causing the lung fibrosis, that was fibrosis. So there is very much important with what kind of medications are causing lung fibrosis. Once again, there's some connective tissue disorder. Which have, uh, talked earlier in our previous class. There's some some of the connective tissue disorder. These are also called. These are also causing the basals and fibrosis. But if you're talking about the uh, ankylosing spondylitis, that is causing the apical joint fibrosis. Okay, causing the asbestos. Very important uh, uh, pathological factor for causing the lung fibrosis. So uh, the age variety. If you're um, observing the patients, uh, then see that the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is typically the same in between the 50 to 70 years old and it's common in men, okay? So note it, 50 to 70 years and common in men. So what I uh, want to tell you guys that is, suppose if you were suspecting someone uh, being suffer, suffered by the lung fibrosis and he is only 40 or only 30, 30 to 40 years. So you have to be very careful. Why? Why he or she has been suffering from, she has been suffering from the lung fibrosis. Might be there any kind of connective tissue disorder and okay, that might be the uh, medication induced lung fibrosis, okay? But in typically, if the, if the S, 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 um, S group is between the 50 to 70 years, then there's some, some another cause, like the asbestos exposure or something different cause, okay? So what are the features? The main features of lung fibrosis is very, very important, very important, and that is the shortness of breath on exertion, okay? Shortness of breath on exertion, and that talk is very, very important, the shortness of breath on exertion. And after that, and after that, the patient would tell you that the patient has been suffering from cough and which is dry, non-productive, okay? So shortness of breath, here I can say, the shortness of breath on exertion, shortness of breath on, on exertion. And once again, if I'm telling you guys, and that is the dry cough, dry cough, DC, okay? DC, dry cough. So shortness of breath on exertion and the patient is coming up with the features of dry cough. So another duty of this is, you know, the heart failure, right? So um, how can we evaluate the patient will get the bypass of frequency. On oh, no, second, the bypass of frequency, we get it also there in case of heart failure. Okay, But in case of heart failure, there is orthopnea. In case of heart failure, there is leg edema, okay? So unlike here. So idiopathic lung fibrosis, we can get it very, very early. 
uh, if you are very careful regarding the history taking, if you're very careful regarding the scenarios, yeah, then you'll get it very early as a, as the diagnosis. Okay. And after that, the trichoff, the patient, what the patient has, the patient has clubbing. The patient has clubbing. So there are so many things together. What I say, there's three C, three C, C plus C plus C, three C. If you are getting the three C, unless otherwise good, that should be the cases of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So three C, what are the three C? What does it mean? C for cough, C for clubbing, C for crackles. So cough, clubbing, crackles. If the patient has everything, the patient has shortness of breath on exertion, the patient has bivasal crepitations, okay, the patient has dry cough, and then, but that patient has, doesn't have any kind of clubbing. Then heart failure is very good differential. But if the patient is having the clubbings, then you need to allow the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It's very important. So how do you diagnose the patient? You can diagnose the patient just by doing the lung function test I mean the spirometry. And here, after doing the spirometry, you can see that classically, if the patient is having the restricted picture, as we know that idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis should be, must be the restricted pattern of finding. So the restricted pattern, and we all know the restricted, the restricted pattern, the APV on normal and decreased APC. I mean the portion, uh, the ratio of APV on the APC that should be more than 0.8 or 80%, right? So definitely the APV on by APC that will be increased. So you, you, you must know the thing very well that how after evaluating the APV on by APC, we are uh, estimating the obstructive lung pathology and the restrictive lung pathology. In cases of obstructive lung pathology, uh, the APV on by APC is uh, below 0.7. And after, uh, if you're getting the APV on by APC ratio more than 0.7 or more than 0.8, then that should be the restrictive lung pathology. And here you can see the patient has, as the patient has been suffering from the ILD or the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, so definitely this one type of uh, restrictive pathologies. Okay, so once again, the impaired gas exchange, I mean, the reduced transport factor POC, that would be the reduced, uh, I mean, impaired, that should be impaired. And if you're going for uh, the imaging test, then the imaging will show, show us that the patient is, uh, is having the bilateral interstitial shadowing, which we are calling the typical small, irregular, and the peripheral opposites. And definitely the crown glass, crown glass, which will be progressed to the honeycomb. And that's, that's important. That's actually important for all of us. And the ground glass, definitely, in cases of COVID-19, we have seen the patient is having the ground glass opposite. It's, being, it's, it's, it's a fibrosis, right? So the ground glass fibrosis, and that's... Uh, leading the patient, the patient's lung to honeycomb appearance. Okay, might be this, might be that that you can see it on X-ray, but ACRCT is base test. Okay, ACRCT as we we have done in in case of COVID pneumonia patients. So ACRCT scanning is the investigation of choice. Never forget investigation of choice. Certainly, investigation of choice is nothing but the ACRCT. But in case of X-ray, you can find it. The patient is having the ground glass of facilities but if you if, if you are asked uh, that what is the uh, gold standard investigation what is the investigation of choice then definitely need to pick the name of the ace rct okay sometimes the ana positive in 35 30 percent patients rheumatoid factor might be positive in 10 percent but this does not necessarily mean the fibrosis is saying that due to the connective tissue disorder that's very important line okay that's very important life. Might be that, that you are getting, uh, might be you are getting the ANA positive, might be you are getting the rheumatoid factor positive, but it doesn't mean the patient is having the, uh, the any kind of connective tissue disorder underlying this. So, and then titers are usually low in the in those cases. Okay, so now how do you manage the patient? Actually, uh, if the patient has already got lung fibrosis, it does mean the patient has got the ILD, I mean interstitial lung disease. So you need to rehabilitate the patient because you can't make the patient good just by giving some medications or medication. So you need to rehabilitate the patient. So pulmonary rehabilitation is very much important there in cases of treating the cases of pulmonary lung fibrosis. Sorry, I mean the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And very few medications are there, this, though there are, contro there are some controversy regarding their efficacy and uh, even the potency. So 
uh, there are few, very few medications. Uh, those are giving some bit of benefit to the patients of the IPF. Uh, and there is some evidence that perfenidone, an antifibrotic agent, we all have used in case of COVID pneumonia, right? The pal fibro and palmosis, those are the medications we have used so many times there in case of COVID pneumonia. Though we don't know, actually we don't know that why we have done it, but uh, as the seniors have done it, so we've done it. So in cases of the perfenidone, the antifibrotic agent that has been used uh, and many patients sometimes might need the lung transplantation, okay? If the supplementary oxygen is paid, then. So just think with me, if a patient is, has been suffering from the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, so the best treatment of, for the patient is to give, give him or give her some bit of relief by uh, ensuring the uh, pulmonary rehabilitation. That is the number one thing, because you can't make the patient just uh, very well, or like just just to just by giving some oral medication like the antifibrotic acid, like perfenidone, just by uh, trans uh, lung transplantation. Though is actually not uh, that much easier how we easily we can speak out. Now the pro what about the prognosis? Okay, the prognosis, as I said, as we're thinking, we're thinking about the pulmonary rehabilitation. It does mean the prognosis is very bad, and that's true. Uh, 